Hi friends! Today we are covering the Pat McGrath Labs and Bridgerton collaboration collection. This just arrived in the mail today. I ordered this set on the 26th of December. Today is the 7th of January and the weeks prior having not heard from Pat McGrath Labs immediately told me to be patient because the collection is sold out. It must have been a lot of orders that just rolled in at once. So I could only assume the volume of orders affected the uh, speed of shipping out. So here we are. But if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. If you want to see what my virtual class schedule is all about, well then please sign up for my newsletter down below. Here are my biases. I absolutely adore Pat McGrath. I have received PR from her in the past. These pieces, however, I have purchased. I don't know if Pat McGrath Labs is sending PR as I had not seen anyone receive the collection in the last few weeks. So that's just my assumption there. I wanted to present that because if you want to see a review from someone who is neutral on Pat, doesn't like Pat, doesn't receive PR from Pat, then there you go. I thought we would conduct this video by covering the product details details first, we'll do the swatches, we'll do the looks, and then I'll save the comparisons for the end. All time stamps will be down below, as well as the chapters here you will see along the time bar. Once you scroll your cursor over the blocks, you'll see what the title is and you can skip over however you like. Bridgerton. No, I have not seen the show. I think it was fairly popular because it released during the thrills of the apocalypse. People were at home and they had content to watch that was romantic, thrilling, and scandalous all at once. Although I heard of it, I think the hype just made me not watch it even more. That's the same thing that happened with Tiger King. Despite the talk and the hoopla surrounding that show, I just didn't bother. I didn't want to see that stuff. Now, this this show is not a particularly popular genre for me when it comes to watching TV. I am a huge anime fan and I have still seen my fair share of real people's shows, but right now my heart and soul is just dead in the anime sphere right now and I could not bring myself to watch this. Even though Mother our damned mother Pat McGrath collaborated with Netflix and this is a great opportunity for her. I'll go into the aesthetics of all that stuff and why I think this is an appropriate matchup. I just, so forgive me, if you wanna watch a video from someone who has seen Bridgerton, I totally understand. And if you don't know what Bridgerton is, Google is helpful in that respect. This collection dropped on December 26th and I think we found out about it maybe a week or two prior and people were very excited. Pat McGrath's first collaboration with a, a TV show or at that point a franchise was with Star Wars and that was quite the release. I have that collection and I think that matchup represented Pat's love of galactic science fiction feel of things. This is definitely along her aesthetic with the Regency era being the historical backdrop for Bridgerton and just its elegance and splendor about it. Specifically, the Regency era is known for its, I took notes, its elegance, achievements in the fine arts and architecture. Very glamorous and glossy is almost considered a mini renaissance and once we saw the release of Pat's Mothership Palace back in 2017 when we were smacked with that aesthetic we were like oh mother loves the resplendent and then seeing decadence and her holiday collections being designed with the crown jewel aesthetic it was only fitting that she collaborate with Bridgerton and I'm very happy for her and the team. I'm not a particular fan however of the packaging. I could see what they were going with it considering the show and the costumes, the lace, the 
pearls. That's why I put my pearls on today. And of course, she had to add roses because mother loves her roses. I don't know if this is my favorite packaging design from her, but I don't know where else the team would have went with the design. I don't do this for a living, so who am I to make an opinion like that? But that's not to say the makeup is not beautiful. So why don't we start with what I think is one of the most highly anticipated pieces from the collection. It's the Mothership Diamond of the First Water eyeshadow palette. Diamond of the First Water is the episode one title from season one of Bridgerton. It means an exceptionally beautiful young woman comes from a technical term to describe diamonds. The degree of brilliance in a diamond is called its water, quote unquote. So the diamond of the first water is an exceptionally fine diamond. So here we have it. What do you notice immediately? The smaller pans. Less cover why that might be. I have rose decadence here next to me, just so you can see a pan size comparison. Before that though, this palette retails for $65, and I know you're like, the price is the same. What the heck is that about? Each pan weighs in at 1.1 grams each, whereas the originally sized pans weigh in at two grams each. However, this palette, alongside the other items in the collection, they are all made in Italy, which is why I suspect the same price, but smaller pans. So here you see Rose Decadence, the two gram pans, and here you see Diamond of the First Water from the Bridgerton collab, 1.1 grams. Yes, they are smaller, but this is the first time that a six pan palette from Pat McGrath was made in Italy because prior ones, well, the first ones that released, remember these guys, the small smaller mothership palettes, I believe they might have released the same year as their larger counterparts, which is 2017. You can correct me down below. These were made in the USA. The holiday palettes were also made in 2017. I forget which ones. It might have been the Star Wars palettes, maybe before. What came up before? They were made in the USA, but with imported ingredients. So that's when the manufacturing started to change. And now we have a six pan palette from Pat McGrath Labs that is made in Italy, but we also have the first time a baked astral shade in a six pan palette design. Never before have we seen that. All the textures found in the six pan palettes were either matte, satin, shimmer or metallic. We did not have baked formulas. And from seeing the pans, it looks like this one here, Love Match, is also a baked formula. If you can detect how the pan is slightly raised in the frame, and you can see that from Regency Blue. So I just wanted to point that out. And yes, it is the same price, but given that we have two formulas that we have not seen in a six pan format until now, and again, it is made in Italy and not in the USA, might explain why Although the pans are smaller, the price is the same. You can discuss that down below. I'll be happy to participate in that dialogue, but don't get too upset, okay? First, we have Iconic Ingenue. I believe this is a pink shimmery metallic. Very smooth to the touch, not super shiny. It reminds me of her Skin Show nude shades found in her larger palettes. Next, we have Art of the Swoon. Art of the Swoon might be a satin, and look, we have the embossing here. My apologies for not mentioning that earlier. We've never had embossings in a six pan format before. And I think that is definitely a satin. You can see there's a little bit of sheen there, a nice medium pink color. And here we have Regency Blue, our blue astral shade. The first time we see, it. ooh, an astral shade in a six pan palette. That is quite nice as suspected. You can see it's more veil-like feel. It's not, I don't think, meant to be worn alone, although you could. It doesn't have a very strong base. I think more formulated to be layered over the other shades here, as I have seen in many of Pat McGrath's demos on her IG. Plum Re 
regalia, a matte plum shade. Oh, that's pretty. We definitely will do comparisons with that shade. I'm thinking Utopian Dream, Bronze Borealis, basically all the the divine rose ballads. Duchess Divinity, metallic shade, feels like it. Ooh, look at that beautiful shine. Let's see, Divine Dusk, Eleganza. We got a lot of comparisons with that shade, but it is beautifully shiny as suspected. The texture is beyond smooth from the pan. And lastly, we have Love Match. The other baked shadow in this palette. Ooh, this is more of a a reddish tone plum and you can see there's a little bit of sheen there much like what exists in Art of the Swoon. So here are all the swatches from Diamond of the First Water. I'm very excited to get into this palette as I cannot wait to try these satin bake shades on the cheeks as I think that is encouraged from the PML team to do. What do we got next? The Divine Blush and Glow Trio. Love at first blush. This trio retails for $52, a total weight of 10.5 grams or, or 0.37 ounces of product. Now this format in terms of the trio with two divine blushes and one highlighter was introduced in the most recent holiday collection, Celestial Odyssey, where Mother gave us a trio of blushes, all existing shades. This one I have is Amber Allure, same format here. Here, and Amber Allure is the trio that Venus Nectar was launched in. This was not existing until the trio released, and now we have Venus Nectar also in this trio alongside Cherish and Nymphette. I have Cherish and Nymphette on standby, the singles, because last time one of you had mentioned that I believe it was the Love Struck blush that was found in the trio was not quite the same as the shade that exists as a single. So I have both Nymphette and Cherish here. Let's first swatch Nymphette from the single pan. Here is Nymphette from the trio. I think they're the same. They look the same to me. Uh, consistency feels more or less the same. Now, is it possible that there might be a slight nuance of difference? Sure, given the fact that you're coming from single pan to trio, maybe that transition could affect the formula in some way. That is just my speculation. I don't know for sure. The hypothesis has not been tested, I'm sorry. Here we have the Cherish single. Ooh, I'm running out of room. And here we have the Cherish from the trio. I think those look the same as well in terms of consistency and color. What do you guys think down below? Do you detect that Nymphette is a little lighter in the trio than what's in the single pan? I think Nymphette is actually a little lighter. Am I going nuts? Let's try this again. This is Nymphette from the trio. This is Nymphette from the single. Yeah, I think they're a little different. They're a little different. Nymphette from the trio is a little lighter. Just wanted to give you all a heads up based on what we've seen from the last comparison. Why don't we go with Venus Nectar? So this is Venus Nectar from Amber Allure. And here is Venus Nectar from Love at first blush. The Venus Nectar from the Amber Allure looks a little more pink. Now again, these are very slight differences. Some people might not think is a huge deal. Some might think it's significant. I'm just presenting swatches. Don't kill the messenger. Lastly, we have what I think I'm mostly excited about. It's the Skin Fetish Sublime Skin Highlighters. Here we have the Bridgerton silhouette design on the compact. I think it's nice. It's not particularly my favorite, but you know, I think they are consistent with the aesthetic of the show and also combining it with Pat McGrath Labs aesthetic. We have first Incandescent Gold 002. The highlighters retail for $60 and they each weigh in at 12 grams each or 0.42 ounces of product. And my apologies for not mentioning all these products, the palette, the blush trio, and the highlighters all have a suggested shelf life of 18 months. The embossing from the Bridgerton highlighter takes on 
the a similar one to the lunar nude highlighter from the celestial odyssey collection and just to be sure here oh actually there's more in this highlighter 10.5 grams versus 8.5 grams the only difference is you got a little angel offering up the crown or taking the crown <laughs> however you want to interpret it guess where incandescent gold 003 is i'll wait answer down below no other than our beloved nocturnal nirvana this is incandescent gold 003 i thought that was quite nice we got an incandescent gold collective going on it is pat mcgrath so not surprised this is a sparkling platinum gold that shine is absolutely gorgeous of course i ran out of arm space let me place it here just look at that beautiful shine. This is the one that might slightly prefer over Lunar Nude, although I adore Lunar Nude for its slightly silvery look, but it's still champagne to have now Incandescent Gold 002 in this highlighter collection is most welcome. Now we have extreme gold 002 straight up yellow gold this immediately reminded me of fenty beauty's trophy wife which i believe i decluttered so my apologies i do not have that shade anymore for a comparison this however comes in the gel to powder formula which i think far more user friendly and approachable with this shade and why don't we take a look my goodness the shine on this is incredible. Whoa. If you're deeper complected, I cannot wait to see this on different skin tones. Just my goodness me. It's, it's absolutely incredible. All right, now that we have covered all the details and the swatches, why don't we start with the cheek products? And I only say that because I think it better for you to see cheek stuff from this distance since the light, I think, will hit the highlighter in a, a favorable way. I have my Glam Core on. The light is constantly changing, so my apologies, fam. I cannot rely solely on natural light. It is just far too unpredictable. And yeah, I... Thanks for understanding. I do want to apply. I do want to apply. I want to apply. Nymphet from the trio. Just so you can see, I'm picking it up from here. I'm curious. Ooh, that's nice. I mean, I have Nymphet, so this is not much of a surprise. But I do see that it's, it is a little lighter. It is a little lighter. It reminds me of Flirtatious in terms of just the hue. I think this is a little more peachy than Flirtatious. And it does have a little bit of a sheen. It's not completely matte. I believe Nymphet is one of the... Is it one of the more pearlized or demi-matte finishes? But that's how it looks. If you're around my skin tone and you're not particularly fond of blush or heavily pigmented blushes, this definitely will deliver like a very light flush of color. I am dying to get into Incandescent Gold 002. Now, the instructions on the website highly encourage to layer this over the highlighter stick. I think one of the best products from Pat McGrath Labs is a dual-ended stick that has a clearish balm and also the color, whether it's golden, nude, or bronze. I wanna go in with the balm side first because I think it advantageous for the gel powder to be applied on something with a little more adherence versus dry skin. Ooh, I... Are you ready? Incandescent gold, zero, zero, two. Here we come. Oh, that's quite nice. There's a little bit of, just a tiny bit of like a sparkle I see. I'm switching brushes because I'm always curious as to the difference in blend when it comes to the different bristles. There is a little bit of sparkle. It's not glitter, but I did not detect this from Lunar Nude. Just wanted to let you know. Maybe I just didn't see it well enough when I did use it. 
is is a beautiful color definitely leaning a little more golden than lunar nude all right we're putting on the gold highlighter i mean we we could not not do that placing the bomb on first extreme gold Ooh, I think extreme gold is actually a little smoother than incandescent. Incandescent, again, I'm picking up these little particles of dazzle, whereas extreme gold, I'm not. That's not bad. So from head on, you can detect that there is something on my cheekbones. But when I turn, definitely more impactful than incandescent gold on me whoa but far more blend and skin friendly than trophy wife i mean that thing just looked like a streak of gold shimmer on my cheekbones even if you buffed it down it wasn't the best i felt in terms of presenting itself as a highlighter on the cheekbones or you could also place it lower on the cheekbones so maybe it might appear as a more suitable highlight shade lower if you're my complexion or lighter, but I could only assume amazing things if you're deeper complected than I am to wear this higher on the cheekbones, how that highlight effect will just look blazingly gorgeous. So on this side, we have incandescent gold 002. On the other, extreme gold 002. I love them both. Even with the little sparkly arclies from incandescent gold, I don't mind them at all. I do want to apply Venus Nectar, however, on the apples of my cheeks. Venus Nectar was, I was very much impressed by it when I first used it from Amber Allure. It doesn't have the same formula as the gold highlighters in the single compacts. This is more of a traditionally formulated powder. Although Pat McGrath Lab powders do have oils in them to encourage a smoother blend, a more skin-like in finish texture. Just be warned if you wear it lower on the face where there are more pores residing, you might not have a smooth of a blend or smooth out of a finish as you would if placed higher on the cheekbones. But I think it nice to experiment with different placements of highlighter just so you could get an idea of what works best for your face anatomy. Now that we've applied the chic product, why don't you come in a little closer <gasps> that's enough Ooh, you're you're in nice and close now to see these highlighters what do you think i actually adore extreme gold i know it's it's a lot but the fact that it's this gel powder texture i think it far more blend and user friendly than if it were a traditional powder even pat mcgrath labs powder highlighter formula i'm very happy they released these shades in the gel to powder formula oh did i mention this was a first impressions this is a first impressions <laughs> i'm sure that's obvious but you know in case someone is confused about that I wanted to uh, make sure that was known, that my thoughts right now are, I guess you would say impulsive as I just opened the box, but I'm, I'm trying to stay grounded at the same time. I took notes and researched all these products last night, so I've already immersed myself in a way with the Bridgerton collection, and now diving into it, I'm, I feel like I have a little bit of perspective. All right. What shall we do first? I decided to use a goat brush with the satin shades because since they are baked, I just wanted a, a slightly more aggressive pickup. So first we're going in with Art of the Smooth. <laughs> this shade here with the uh, Bumblebee, which I'm sure is significant to the show. Let me know down below. Oh, it says flawless, my dear. Well, that's some nice positive reinforcement to have in your palette. Let's take this now into the crease and nice color right away. And you can see a little bit of that sheen that we saw in the swatch. The artist also brought this out. So please feel free to take on that blush draping technique where you apply blush very high on the cheekbones 
around the tail end of your brow to imbue just like that rosy look to the face you know definitely it's definitely a look for sure now with love match let's place this more on the outer part of the V. This is now going to introduce a, a deeper plum shade, although not so much for intensity, I think more to create this gradient. So we do have a little more color there now on the outer part of the lid. You could also go in on the inner. Now, what I've seen from, actually, let me just put this all over the lid. What I've seen from lots of demos is that they will place the plummy pinky shades first on the lid and they'll layer over Regency Blue, which you might think quite strange considering that they're two different shades, but actually I think it looks nice because Regency Blue is not so much a blue shadow is more so like that twinkle effect. So here we have Art of the Swoon Love Match on. I do want to apply Iconic Ingenie on the inner corner. Not the shiniest shade. This is, you know, I would consider this more of a, a satin shimmer, satin metallic. It has glow, it's not so much shine. And if you prefer that for your inner corner highlight, then fantastic. Taking just a smaller shader brush here, sweeping it in. Now the part that I'm really excited to do. When they take the color, and texture-wise, this is consistent with Pat's actual shades found in her bigger Mothership palette. There is some texture in the pan, but very smooth when you sweep it around. And tapping that over the plumier, pinkier shade is, is a specific look for sure. I think I have to dedicate a video on how, if you wanted to approach this palette in a, a everyday manner, which you can, you can just put Regency Blue maybe on the inner corner instead, although I feel this will change once I apply falsies. It will probably bring the look together a little bit more. But the actual Regency Blue shade, I think, performs well. You don't need a lot. Just tap with your finger and it will adhere to the lid. If you have smaller hooded eyes and you've dealt with the actual shades from Pat McGrath Labs before, I'm sure you're aware where you might have to rely on a glitter glue or intensify wands or any product that it's formulated to add adherence to textures like these astral shades. But that's, that's shiny. It reminds me of VR, VR. When we get to the comparisons, we'll take a look at it. <laughs> Plum Regalia, a more traditionally formulated matte in terms of performance, calculating, calculating, processing. <laughs> Consistent, I think, with Pat Mats. Pat Mats definitely pack a punch, but this one I think is quite smooth. I love the color and appreciate that it's more of a an earthier tone, even if in the plum category, this is, I feel, a little more conservative than the shades here, so happy that it's in the palette, and I'm sure you can probably see that if you slap this on the crease and the lid, maybe apply a black or dark brown liner. It could be a black coffee along your lash line, mascara, lashes. I think would that that be a pretty look? But I want to get into Duchess Divinity, where just from the swatch, it's just, it just looks devastatingly gorgeous. Uh-huh, as suspected, very smooth on the application. That was with the finger, this is with the brush. I think same with a brush, nice to apply with the finger, just so you can ensure that intensity of color and shine, but you can also see the edges blend out quite easily. So you very much can just apply the shade solo if you wanted. Sometimes you run the risk of applying a little too much if with the finger, but a little concealer will help. Now, how about we try Regency Blue on top of Duchess Divinity. 
I think that a really nice combination. It makes it appear cooler in tone. So that's how it looks on top of the more blue hue. How about, hold on, intensified wand on the inner part of the eye. Let's pick up a smaller shader brush. Regency blue now our stand out inner corner highlight shade. And as suspected, the intensifies definitely brings out a little more shine. And since it is being applied on its own, oh, hey there, sunlight change. And since it's being applied on its own, I think helpful just to have a little more stick on that area of the eye to ensure that it stays put. Not bad at all. I'm gonna slap on a little bit of a iconic ingenier on both brow bones. This is why I like these little tonsidio brushes because they fit perfectly into these uh, smaller eyeshadow pans. Tapping into Art of the Swoon. Ooh, I like the fact that these are like a baked satin formula for the cheeks. Art of the Swoon is very pretty. And I'm layering this over Venus Nectar and Incandescent Gold 002. And I can imagine if you were to apply this more around the edge of the brow, how it will tie in nicely if you apply that shade on the lids. And this I'll apply our uh, Love Match a little higher here. So this packs a little more punch on my skin tone, but again, you can manipulate it in however you like, but pair with extreme gold, I think quite nice. And the entire uh, color spectrum of this collection, judging from images I've seen from the show, I think everything ties in well. I'm feeling quite splendiferous. That's why I wore my light blue little top. All right, we're gonna apply some lashes and I'll be right back. Here is the finished look applying all the products from the Pat McGrath Labs and Bridgerton collection. Hopefully this gave you a little perspective on if you wanna get on the waiting list for the collection, if you have similar shades, which brings us to the comparison part of the video. Iconic Ingenue, we have a bunch of skin show nude shades, so I'm not going to be too caught up about finding something in the Pat McGrath collection that resembles it exactly. Art of the Swoon is unique in that because it is this baked satin formula, the color you might encounter is will either be a powder matte or a shimmer metallic. I thought of Temptation from the Eternal Eden palette as something similar, but that actually has a lot more to give. That is a creep to matte formula that Pat introduced in that rollout. Or was it before? No, it was that quad. I thought of Rose Decadence, the shade uh, Peach Dusk. Not really, since Art of the Swoon is more pink. As you can see, Peach Dusk is more each. Regency Blue, however, we got a lot of uh, actual shades to cover. So again, this is Regency Blue from ugh, so much noise. Diamond of the First Water. We have VR Violet from Subliminal. Let's take a look at how that... So that has a stronger maroon base and Regency Blue, I think, is more, is more of a blue reflect versus VR Violet. Astral White might take on a similar feel. That's a little lighter than Regency Blue, but you can see that Astral White actually has a stronger blue shift and Regency Blue, I think more of a topper. They're both toppers, but there's a slightly heavier blue shift in Astral White. And of course, Astral Amethyst Moon from the latest Utopian Dream, I think leans a little more lavender in that flip. Actually, when I turn my arm, it's, it's hard to see. There's more of that orchid hue on the flip, whereas there's like orchid speckles in Regency Blue is not necessarily its background shade. Now, the more traditionally formulated powders here, Hypnotique from interstellar icon this was from last year's holiday collection this is more of a metallic shade not an astral one but if you were wondering about you know if you have this quad and you wanted to 
create something similar, it might not have the same effect as the Regency Blue shade because again, the Astral formula is more suitable for those shinier moments to present a little more dazzle to your look where this will be your standout lid color that you would place on the lid exclusively with maybe another color found in that quad, but not to be layered over another shade so it can peek through. And Nocturnal Nirvana, you can see this is, although a blitz shade, this is just like a teal, like a straight up teal. It's a lot warmer in the undertone than Regency Blue. So those are my standout comparisons for Regency Blue, but I want to see now Plum Regalia. I thought of the Bronze Borealis shade, which I'll get to momentarily. So here is Plum Regalia from Down at the First Water. Mink Dusk found in this year's Celestial Odyssey quad. Both mattes, but I thought, wow, those seem very similar. So I think they're they're pretty much dead on, fam. I'm if you really wanted to split if you wanted to split hairs, I think this packs a little more punch than Plum Regalia. I think Mink Dusk packs a little more punch than Plum Regalia. Although I found Plum Regalia to be really nice to blend as a solo shade, whereas Mink Dusk gave me a, like, I needed to grab a workhorse brush to make sure, like I had to get a workhorse brush to really move that shade around. Extreme Plum Noir from Hutopian Dream. That has a little more red in there. Now that I'm seeing it, Plum Regalia, a, just a touch cooler than Mink Dusk, a touch. Extreme Burgundy, Extreme Mahogany from our beloved Divine Rose One. What do we got here? Oh, that's definitely more brown. Yeah. Duchess Divinity. I think we got a couple of those around here somewhere. Just to set up the comparison row. Eleganza from Divine Rose 2 next to Duchess Divinity. That looks to have a little more, I guess it's more, I guess it's more plummy. Divine Dusk also from Divine Rose 2. More plummy, more red. Rose Dusk not going to match, but I just wanted to compare it anyway. It's not going to be as shiny and it's more rosy in tone. Love Lace, I think, will just be more lilac and cooler all around versus Duchess Divinity. Forbidden Fruit from Eternal Eden. Possibly a match. Wow, actually, that's a little more plummy pink than Duchess Divinity. Venus in Fleur's Royist Vixen, Twilight Bronze. Eh, definitely more bronzy, for sure. Especially when you see it in comparison to Duchess Divinity. That's That even looks more taupe to me. So within the category of Duchess Divinity, Eleganza will be your best match if you already have Divine Rose 2 and you already have actually, well, if you have Divine Rose 2 and Mink Dusk from Bronze Borealis, then you can definitely do this. Now, I know you won't be able to do the Astral Shade. You'll have to dip into Sublime, maybe use VR Violet or Astral White and get a little something similar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess this is a little warmer than Plum Regalia. But like I said, splitting hairs, is it that obvious if you were to place them on two different eyes? Well, I guess we could find that out in another video. Here's another look of the actual comparisons. Again, this is Regency Blue, VR Violet, Astral White, Astral Amethyst Moon, Hypnotique, and one second, Blitz Aquamarine. Being those off because I need more room space. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Interstellar from Dark Star. Same thing I uh, surmised with Hypnotique, more of your standout shade versus a topper one. Love match. Love match 
I think might be unique within the Pat McGrath collection of things. That is like a reddish plum, I think quite beautiful. I still have Rose Decadence here on standby. Fuchsia Flame, which might not be completely the same. This is more of a metallic shade. This more of a satin, but I wanted to pair those quickly together. I would say one of the blush shades actually will probably, well, no, that's not true either. Electric Bloom is way too coral. The only one I could think of is Rose Seduction from Divine Rose 2. Not the same formula. This is more of a true powder, whereas Love Match is a satin shade, and this is far more magenta with like that slight blue shift in there. Cosmic Bloom, definitely more pink for sure. Although I think what will be a beautiful pairing with a uh, love match would be Blitz Sex Dream. I think that that'll be pretty cool. It's, it's still a little plum red, maybe out of the zone of that color spectrum. I think it'll be quite interesting to see how those pair together. Now, let me know if I'm missing any other comparisons. I I'm probably am, but I don't recall having that shade, and I just did my ultimate guide. Given, yes, I only covered the bigger Mothership Palace and did not dive into the six pan ones or the quads, this shade is very unique to the Pat McGrath family. It's, again, a baked satin formula. You can have similar shades. I think the closest comparisons we've seen thus far are between Regency Blue and Astro White found in Mothership One Subliminal and Duchess Divinity to Eleganza, which exists in Divine Rose 2. Those were the most standout comparisons to me. Oh, as well as Plum Regalia with Mink Dusk from Bronze Borealis. Now we have to do the highlighter comparisons. I would love to start with Lunar Nude from this year's most recent holiday release. Lunar Nude is more of a pink champagne, as you see there. Gorgeous shade. And now with Incandescent Gold 002. This has more of a, a yellow gold feel, if you will. So that's how those two look. I temporarily turned off the light because it's quite shiny, but I just wanted to give you a better view of how those two compare. You can definitely detect more pink from Lunar Nude. That might be more preferable to you, of course. Fine Gold 003 from the Highlighter Trio, I think resembles Incandescent Gold much more closely. But you can see on the tilt, yes, that there's more of like a champagne gold base to incandescent gold 002 golden nectar from the divine blush collection that has more of like a, a pink shift and not as shiny but it definitely has more of a glow effect on the skin champagne gold from last year's holiday collection this has like more of a lavender feel to it so not quite similar to, although they might look cooler here on this angle, Incandescent Gold 002 definitely leans more of like a, a gold champagne. Divine Rose Highlighter, more pinky gold. I'm sure you have already suspected that, but I know just in case, if you wanna check it out, let me put that here on the tail end as you see. Not even, not even close. And just to quickly show you, this is Extreme Gold 002 up against Incandescent Gold 003. Next to Incandescent Gold 002. Now, you can definitely use this shade as a highlighter if you want, but these are the main differences between the three. I do like Incandescent Gold 002. I think it's quite nice. Again, even with the little sparkly arclys there, I don't think they're a big deal, but I wanted to mention that in case you would have a problem with that. An extreme gold on me, you just, it just makes me look very shiny. It definitely leans more yellow, but I think again, being in this formula allows it to be more wearable. It looks beautifully smooth on the skin. I mean, it basically 
infuses and melts with it, but I also think it helpful when layered over again, whether it's a balm or if you want to set your face first, it'll be more beneficial if you prepped that area of your face first with something that will help melt even the gel powder, which again, lovely formula from Pat McGrath Labs. It'll be an even better finish once you take that step. And that is it, friends, the presentation of Pat McGrath Labs and Bridgerton. I hope this was helpful. Let me know down below if you've received your order yet, if you bought anything from the collection, what your thoughts might be, if this helped you decide to get these products or not. I would love to know your insights down below. I'll see you down in the comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Pavagraph Labs Extravaganza or Monthly Faves. Take care and I'll see you again soon.